Russia's war on Ukraine, as we just mentioned, is now in its 100th day. And President Vladimir Putin's decision to invade has shaken Europe. That's forcing NATO, the NATO alliance to rethink its security posture. Three NATO allies, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, are calling for a tripling of NATO troops in their countries. A decision on that is expected later this month. Rielis Lensburgis is Lithuania's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Zanda Kalnina Lukasvica is Latvia's Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. We welcome you both to the program. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Hello. Minister Lansburgis, I'd like to start with you. How concerned are you about your country becoming the next Ukraine? Well, I probably can say about, uh, about the Baltic states that uh, we've been concerned uh, long before uh, the war in Ukraine started. Uh, we raised concerns in 2008 when Russia first uh, attacked uh, Georgia, then in 2014 when the Russia first time attacked Ukraine, and now for us it's a continuation. And so the logical escalation uh, for our people is Russia trying something in, in NATO countries, and uh, therefore we are so much concerned that uh, NATO has to match uh, defense-wise uh, mm -hmm. what Russia is doing on the other side of the border in Belarus. Uh, now, I know you want to talk about NATO, and we absolutely are going to get there, Minister, but I also know that your country has been in a state of emergency um, since Russia invaded Ukraine. And so I just want to stay with this idea right now about how, how real the threat feels at this particular moment. Well, when the war started, and even before the war started, Russia has been building up uh, its military presence in Belarus. And Lithuania has uh, about 700 kilometers border with Belarus. Some of their bases where Russian troops were, were present were just five kilometers away uh, from Lithuanian border. So you basically could hear helicopters uh, in, in, in Belarus training for their mission in, in Ukraine. So for us, it's very real. Even the capital itself, uh, Vilnius, is just 30 kilometers away from the Belarusian border. So it is, it is very real. It's not a theoretical threat. So, um, so people would tell you that in the street of Vilnius and uh, most likely in other cities. Ms. Kalnina Lukasvica, I wonder if you can weigh in on that point. You know, obviously we are watching with incredible um, interest and concern, deep concern here in Canada, but you feel it in a very different way being so close. What, what is it that you think other countries may not grasp when we don't have the proximity to Russia that you do? So in, uh, in our situation, uh, also the history speaks. Mm -hmm. We have experience uh, when uh, Soviet Union, uh, all the time Russia uh, invaded us and occupied for 50 years. Uh, that's why we also uh, have this hist historical uh, background and uh, people are uh, feeling very concerned about uh, uh, Russia's uh, actions and military invasion of other countries. Uh, right now, uh, so we saw also the Russia build the military build up along the Ukrainian border uh, over the, at the end of the last year. Uh, so we uh, were talking a lot about uh, the possibility of uh, military conflict and uh, uh, the risks uh, that uh, Ukraine and by that uh, Europe is facing. Now after uh, uh, that February 24, mm -hmm. and also after we saw uh, the events uh, and atrocities in Bucha and Irpin in, in Mariupol, uh, it's very, very worrying. For us, the big difference is that we are a NATO country. And uh, we know that we are protected and defended uh, by uh, NATO. Our society, uh, from one side, feels really concerned about the, what Russia is doing, especially uh, uh, what Russia is doing in Ukraine. At the same time, uh, we know and we rely on uh, NATO uh, concerning our uh, security. And so I'll move back to Minister uh, Landsbergis for that discussion about NATO. We'll, we'll touch on it with both of you. Um, but your countries are calling for an upgraded NATO presence, uh, moving NATO uh, from NATO battalions to NATO brigades. Minister Landsbergis, I wonder, at this upcoming summit, we know that this will be a topic of discussion. What is your sense right now of the extent to which NATO countries are on board with such a move? Well, the debate is ongoing. And uh, I can tell you that the decision has not yet been found. Uh, probably one of the one of the things is that um, it's difficult uh, for the countries that been living in in peace for so long uh, and were expecting to live in peace for many decades to come suddenly to uh, to change their posture and to assist countries that are so close to the war and assist them practically. 
that means that going from, uh, from the battalion uh, to a brigade, that means a three-time increase. Uh, so not every country has the ability to provide uh, this sort of um, true presence in, in, in the eastern flank. Uh, but still, what we're looking into, we understand the difficulty, but we would like to, uh, to reach the commitment. Is it a tough uh, sell? That we would be struck. Is it a tough sell? Is that what you're yes. saying about countries just, just not grasping at the same time? Um, it, it, it was way easier at, uh, when the war started. Uh, so when, uh, when we were terrified and mortified by the images uh, that uh, reached us from Kiev and surrounding areas, now kind of the war becomes normality and we adapt to it and uh, you know the question might rise oh maybe you know russia will not do anything so maybe you know we have more time to prepare more time for political debate and discussion but this is truly not how the countries on the border feel uh, we feel that the threat is there uh, the danger is there and the possibility is 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 there and therefore we would like that to be to be matched by commitments and you know and i can i can tell you we're not the free riders you know, all three Baltic states have committed to, uh, to increasing our defense spending to 2.5 percent. Lithuania already has done that. Uh, the countries are looking in the, in the fastest way how to reach that. But that means that, you know, we're taking care as much as we can uh, in our, our defense. But we would like our partners to do the same thing with us. Mm -hmm. Ms. Kalnina Luskatvich, I'd, li I'd like to bring you in on that question of defense spending, um, because as, as we just heard, uh, Baltic countries spending more than 2 percent of their GDP on defense, as NATO requires, Canada is aspiring to 1.5 percent. What would your message be for Canadians uh, about whether or not more money ought to be spent on this, and, and whether that's fair? So it's true that on Solatria for this year is spending 2.2 percent, uh, and uh, it's it's a general in, uh, commitment uh, of uh, NATO to increase uh, defense spendings, and especially these days we see how important it is. We need to strengthen our defense, we need to uh, increase our capabilities, and yes, we also uh, uh, look for a strengthened NATO presence in Baltics. Of course, uh, it's, uh, the concrete numbers uh, it depends on each and every country's uh, possibilities and the bu budget decisions. Uh, we see that Canada right now is uh, investing uh, really a lot uh, in our security. We appreciate it uh, enormously. Uh, so Canada is uh, uh, leading the multinational uh, uh, battalion in, in Latvia. Uh, Canada took decisions, very quick decisions, and implemented them by sending additional troops to Latvia after February 24. Uh, and uh, that's really appreciated. But, but, but then what do you want from NATO, Canada? Um, yeah. Sorry? It, it, well, I, I appreciate everything that you're saying, but as we come to this meeting, if the question is not about uh, further dis defense spending from Canada, where would you like to see Canada play a role? So we would like to see Canada, so uh, as uh, Canada already promised and, and repeat, repeated it several times, that it, it will continue to lead the multinational uh, Enhanced Forward Presence Battalion in, in Latvia. Uh, uh, that's very, very important, also in a long term. Uh, so this mission has been already prolonged, uh, and it's, it's a very important decision Canada took. Now, together with other Baltic countries, with Canada, with other uh, uh, NATO uh, members, we are uh, preparing for NATO summit, uh, where we expect decisions on strengthening uh, the security of the Baltic uh, countries, the strengthening of the security of the eastern flank. That's a complex uh, decision uh, that needs to be taken, uh, not only about the troops, but also equipment, armament, uh, enablers, uh, uh, so that our countries uh, would be better protected. Mr. Landsberg, so I'll give you the last thought, and I, I'd like you to weigh in on what you think, what you want the world to know about what the stakes are in terms of ending this conflict as we head, in, head into this NATO meeting. Um, the conflict in Ukraine, you mean? Yes. Well, um, many countries, not only NATO countries, are looking into this conflict as a precursor to what will, might happen in, in the future. Uh, if Ukraine wins, if we help Ukraine win, if Russia loses, this is a message to the aggressors and to the potential victims that with enough defense, if uh, enough support, it's possible to win. And it's a message to aggressors that it's not worthwhile uh, attacking uh, sover sovereign neighbors uh, because the Western alliance will be able to assist those who are endangered to the point where you will lose. 
So it's, the history is being written here and uh, not just in, in the conflict in, in Ukraine, but for many decades to come. Okay, we're gonna have to leave our conversation there today. We thank you both so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.